What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today we're going to try to fix the switch on this here auction chop saw that I got. If you haven't seen that video, it's the last one. You can go check it out. Uh, the switch is stuck in the on position, so you got to unplug it and plug it in, you know, to turn it on and off. So we're going to take a look at it and see if we can fix it. All right, so today we're going to try to fix this trigger right here, the switch to see if we can fix it right now. Uh, in case you didn't see the video where I got this lot of stuff from an auction, the trigger doesn't work. Um, once you plug it in, the thing is on and it only shuts off when you unplug it. So we're gonna take the switch off and uh, see if we can figure out uh, if the switch is, is there something crazy inside, shorted out or who knows what it is. It feels kind of weird. That one's gone. Like little tiny hex nuts. And there we go. All right, just by looking at it, these down here look like they are put in after the fact. I don't even know where that would go. It's all plat. No, I guess this is metal. So it grounds there. That's just nothing. It's broke out. And then they terminated here so this would just be the bridge so <clears throat> it must be stuck in the open position there's your lockout looks like it's super difficult to get the switch out too <clears throat> two screws maybe we can take the switch apart it looks like it snaps closed and we shall see make sure that you got it unplugged before you do any of this stuff obviously See if we can unsnap it <clears throat> without taking it apart. Sorry, I'm still a little under the weather from being sick for weeks. All right. <clears throat> I will bring you over here so we can see this together. All right, so let's take this thing apart. Huh. A couple little springs. And I can't tell what this does. I'll have to investigate. <clears throat> but it has this little spring right there. I don't know if you can see. All right, so this thing was just it had fallen apart inside. So we've got these two little contactors here. Maybe this one's welded together. Looks pretty cooked down in there. And then this one just fell fell over. So it looks like they're pretty toasted. Um, I'll have to figure out where the springs go. <clears throat> but by the looks of things is that slide just pulls these things open or closed. So pushes this one open. I guess, yeah, it just opens and closes them. So once you uh, once you pull the trigger, it probably slams these things closed. But since this one is like fused right there, that's probably why it's always on. So the little springs I bet go right in here in this little track. And uh, yeah, this little thing right here slides back and forth. It's got a little grease on it, some like lithium grease goes in there and just slides back and forth. And little contactors would probably ride somewhere in there. Down there. <clears throat> so, I don't know what this little spring deal does yet. Hooks on to something and makes it return. I don't know. So, what I can tell already is that these contacts here are just straight up cooked. So, it overheated. I'll just try to get those things apart and we'll take a look at them. All right. I don't know how well you can see these things, but uh, you can tell they are just melted. So yeah, not in good shape. But these are basically like little points in your car. So I should be able to file those things up, make them look nice in here. Same deal, totally roached. But uh, this, side, this other side doesn't look too bad. So I will clean those things up the best that I can 
we'll try to reinsert these things and assemble all the junk back up and we should have a working switch. Thousand grit's a little extreme, but uh, you know, it's what I got laying around. Seems pretty roached out. <clears throat> I don't think I can even get this thing to focus. Look at that thing. It's pretty wrecked. All right, that's quite a bit better. Uh, it's not perfect, but this is good enough. Um, once it starts pitting out, you know, getting a lot of pitting and slag on it and stuff, um, that will just make it worse faster. You know, as the contacts can't fully close, it'll arc and corrode it quicker. So once it starts kind of going bad, it'll just start going bad faster. This will be all right, though, for what we're doing. Significantly more gooder. Let's see if we can just take this thing out. If that little, there we go. Just falls out like that. Little tiny serrated lock washer on it. Should be able to sand it easier like this. That'd be good enough on that one. I'll just do this side since this side here doesn't look bad, but this other side is pretty crusty. So take that one off. I'll sand that one. All right, so there we go. Doesn't look too bad. Fixed up. I'm going to try to figure out how to assemble this thing and let you guys see. I might not be able to because if you can see, that means I can't see. So whatever. Drop that down in it. and the spring snaps down on it. There we go. All right, so this thing should drop in there like so and slide around. One eternity later. All right, I've done a little bit of research, slept on it overnight, and uh, looked online and whatever, tried to figure this out. And uh, the reason we weren't getting anything happening yesterday is because this thing is not reversing the throw of the switch. So here you go. Here's your, your switch. You pull the trigger, and that slides trigger side, right? So you've got... Uh, like a flat area here and a little cutout in the front. There's your little cutout area and it's flat on the back. So what would happen would be it would, when you pull the trigger, it moves that entire carriage forward. So as your contacts are in there, it's actually moving the contacts away from the other contacts as you pull the trigger. So what they had is this little dimple here right there they had a little snap over spring and uh that is right here now this little spring mechanism is supposed to fit into this part right here in the center that little worn out spot and uh what i was reading online is everybody's saying that these things wear out and they stop functioning uh also in the back here i don't know if you could see it there's a little tiny area right there in the back where a little barrel would snap down in it. It's hard to see. Straight down in there. Anyway, I believe this is the part that's supposed to go in there, but it's all broken out, so you can't actually fit that in. And that, I believe, is to secure down this little snap-over mechanism. So the spring is in here sideways. And as you would pull the trigger, 
this thing would just kick over and snap and reverse the direction and snap this thing down on it. Well, that isn't working because everything's all broken. It's apparently pretty common from what I've read on the internet. Um, a lot of people trying to replace the switches on these saws because they fail. And I'll show you right quick um, why no one replaces those switches, which is the Chili 8304. $175. Um, I couldn't find any really anywhere that was sold. <laughs> it wasn't super crazy money. And uh, yeah, I couldn't find anything to replace it with. So what we're going to do is just cut these back ones, tie them together, and cut these front ones and tie them together, eliminate the switch altogether, and put an inline switch somewhere in here. That's the best I can do. Um, I got a, I think this is probably a 15 amp saw, right? Yeah, 15 amp. So I've got 15 and 20 amp switches, like light switches, that'll work fine. Um, or I can just put an inline switch, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're going to be just switching a cord. That's what it's going to have to do because I'm not spending 175 bucks on this thing crazy so that that was what everybody said is uh it's cheaper just to replace the whole saw than buy a switch that's amazing anyhow that's what we're gonna do Alrighty then. So I just kind of mocked some things up, cut some stuff off in the back. There's going to be my switch. Now I could have used the existing switch thing down here, but uh, it would have been difficult to kind of, you know, attach this thing. With this, I've drilled these holes right there. Attach the switch right there and hold it. That way, you know. It'll stay in there. I don't know how else to hold it in like this. There's really no good way to do it. Glue it in or whatnot. So I'm going to change this up. We'll screw it in. Look at that. Classy. Ain't going anywhere. And I didn't see any type of resistor or anything going down um, inside of that switch. So why they've got like friggin' six gauge wire going into the small wires, I'm not entirely sure why they did that other than maybe they sourced the cord. Uh, the cord is the, the this huge pack of wires, so obviously they sourced the cord from somewhere else. And then uh, just attach it. You know, Milwaukee doesn't build this stuff. So apparently that's the cord they got. It looks super beefy, but this is the motor wiring that it's actually going to is the small stuff. So that's how it goes. Everything here should be good now. So <clears throat> if all goes well, this shouldn't come on right now unless the switch is on. Is the switch on? on so it may or may not come on let's see all right so not on
Perfect. Guess we'll just button it all back up. Wish I would have thought about this yesterday. Would have saved a ton of time. But all's well that ends well. I was going to wrap this up with some of my Tessa tape, that like fabric wire loom tape, but shocker, I can't find it anywhere in this mess. So uh, we're going to go just for some electrical tape. The downside of this is it gets gooey over time. Excuse me. The upside of it is, unlike the Tessa tape, which would have um, just collected tons of grime and stuff, because it's like fabric, this I can just wipe down or change out whenever I want. <clears throat> and there we have it <laughs> it's uh it's not great but i mean it it, do it doesn't cut my hand anymore like it did before so i mean it's fine for me there we go we're on plugged in partly this extension cord is almost impossible to get stuff out of Perfect. Okay. Guess I'll just try to clean it up a little bit. Actually, it didn't come out too bad. Yeah. That'll work. So there we go. We fixed this $200 saw for like four bucks in a little bit of time. So yeah, can't beat that. Um, I couldn't find that switch, any the real switch for it anywhere else online. I couldn't even find it on eBay. You saw it, 175 bucks. All of the places I looked at and read all, all of these forums just said replace the saw. It's not even worth finding the switch. But that works. 15 amp, $4 switch from, you know, any home improvement store in a little bit of time. And then there you go. So all fixed. Anyhow, um, yeah, check me out over on Instagram if you want to. Like and comment on this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to. There's lots of cool stuff going on. At least I think so. So, yeah. Hopefully you dug that, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.